everyone and welcome back to Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty where we are about to start chapter 2 of Snake Tales. Big Shell Evil I believe it's called. Um, okay we'll load the previous file I don't know if that'll make any difference or not but sure okay. There we go. So without further ado we're going to jump in. I'm looking forward to this one because um, I believe you get to fight the Harrier, so that's very exciting stuff. Anyway, just like before, I will be reading the text so you guys don't have to. Snake, I have a favour to ask, said Otacon. Snake's face creased into a frown. Otacon's favours always meant trouble, usually for Snake. Forget it. I don't know what you're up to this time, but I'm through running around the country on some half-baked crusade I don't even understand. It's nothing like that. It's my sister. Your sister? Yeah, her name's Emma. Otacon's voice suddenly became grave as he began to relate his story. He recently discovered the whereabouts of his long-estranged sister-in-law. Apparently, she was working as a systems programmer at an ocean cleanup facility in Manhattan Bay called Big Shell. Wait a minute, Big Shell? Isn't that where... Exactly. So you've heard the rumours too? There had recently been a string of accidental deaths among employees of the Big Shell. A number of rumours were circulating about the cause of these deaths. There was a serial killer on the loose. The employees were going stir crazy. The whole place was haunted. Big Shell had gone from being a symbol of environmental responsibility to being a lucrative source of tabloid gossip. I'm worried about Emma. Will you go check on her for me, please? Will you go check on her for me? My one was better. <laughs> Snake waved his hand in dismissal. Go ask the police or something. You know they wouldn't do anything about it. And you assumed that I would? I've got a bad feeling about this thing. Just go and check for me, please. You go. Come on. No way. I'm telling you, Snake, I've got a really bad feeling about this. Please, I'm begging you. Leave me alone. Six hours later, Snake found himself standing on the heliport of Big Shell. He watched as a group of armed men began to take over the facility before his eyes. Snake hid himself behind a crate. Just then, Otacon called on the codec. You think they're some kind of terrorist? He asked. I don't know, but it's pretty clear that the situation is a little more dangerous than before. Congratulations. Looks like you've guessed right. That's not exactly reassuring. I hope Emma's still okay. Yeah, me too, said Snake. His eyes drifted over a Harrier jet parked at the heliport. What about that Harrier? Does it belong to them? No, that belongs to the Marines. Apparently they made an emergency landing here three days ago after a problem occurred during a training exercise. Snake nodded. First things first, we better find out exactly what's going on here. I'm going in. Roger, be careful in there. Oh, and Snake? What? If you do happen to meet Emma, don't mention my name, okay? Why not? Well, we haven't seen each other in a long time, and it's all kind of sudden. Otacon hesitated. Snake realised that there was more to this situation than Otacon was letting on. He decided to let it drop as he headed inside the big shell. Right. Here we go. Do we have anything? Oh, we actually have a gun this time. Okay, sweet. Easy. 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 That's it. Come on, Snake. We got this. We've got our sneaky sneaky on. Don't know what this dude's doing. But we're not going to be able to make those stairs until he moves out of the way. You saw nothing! There's no one here! No one and nothing! Oh! Snake, you fell down the stairs! <laughs> well, at least that went better than I hoped. Alright. Easy. Come on, Snake, we can do this.
I don't want to kill anyone if I don't have to. Oh, for God's sake. Right. So I'm done. I really don't want to kill anyone if I don't have to. Is this dude going to turn around? Son of a... Alright, just run. Just run. Just run, 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 run. Oh well, what can you do? Snake emerged into the DE connecting bridge. Sensing a presence nearby, he quickly hid himself in the shadows. Soon he heard the sound of footsteps, accompanied by voices. What about that girl who got away? said a man's voice. We lost her in Strut C, said another man. Girl? Were they talking about Emma? Snake cocked his head to listen more closely. Lost her? Ooh, that's not good, said the first man. Why? Well, I don't know all the details, but I heard that we need need that brat to get it back. So until we get our hands on her, we're screwed. Snake stole a peek at the two men. They were decked out in full military gear, but they didn't seem to carry themselves like soldiers. The first man continued. What about, you know, the ghost of Big Shell? Nobody's seen him yet. He must know we're here to, to pick it up. He'll be coming for us soon as we find it. If he does, I'll kick his ass. <laughs> I'd do more than that. I'd kill the bastard. He's already iced three of our guys. Ooh, who's that then? The voices trailed off into the distance. Snake called Otacon on the codec. That girl they, t they were talking about, that's Emma, I'm sure of it. They mentioned that some of their comrades were killed by the ghost of Big Shell. What do you think they're talking about? I have no idea. Don't worry about it. Just head to Strut C quickly. Emma's... Otacon was right. Right now, saving Emma was the top priority. Snake decided to head for Strut C. Let's quickly save. We might as well save over that one. There we go. Right, Snake, let's go. What's that? Eeeh! Keep running! Ah! <laughs> I didn't think that was gonna work! Oh my god, I'm so happy! Right. Careful, 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 Shit. Right, that guy's doing his rounds. I just need to wait for this guy to turn around. Come on, turn around. That's it. Who's down No. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. What's that? No, you don't. No, we are not doing this today. No, 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 no. We are not having it. Not today. <laughs> I think I'm pushing my luck a bit here. Hang on, all right. No. Hell no! <laughs> oh my god! So this, oh my god, this game makes me sweat so much. My hands are sweating, my head's sweating, I've got a bloody headache. Right, there's that guy there.
Go. Run, Snake! Yes! Yes! God! <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> oh, God. Never thought I'd make it out of there alive. Get up, buddy. Nope. Stay down. I need to take a shit before we continue. The toilets are lovely and clean, which is always good, and I'm pretty sure this is the ladies' toilet. Ooh, M9! That's gonna make life so much easier. Any goodies in here for me? Bullets. Awesome. I'm under attack. Stay alert. Oh crap! Come on. Go, awesome. Easy snake. Easy. It's the enemy. I need help. Nope. None of that. None of that. We found her! Yay! Right. Breathe. Snake slowly approached the girl who shrank into the corner of the food storage locker. You're Emma, right? Who are you? How do you know my name? Calm down, said Snake, trying to reassure her. I'm on your side. I came to rescue you. You're on my side? That's right. You came to, sa you came to save me? Yes. Really? Really. Emma regarded Snake with a suspicious look. Do I really look like I can't be trusted, said Snake. What's the matter? Don't you have a mirror in your house? Snake started to protest, but Emma cut him off. Whatever. So, why exactly did you come to rescue me? Snake recalled what Otacon had said to him. Whatever happens, don't mention his name. I can't tell you that. Why not? Because I just can't. Emma looked Snake up and down from head to toe. She didn't exactly look convinced, but she seemed to let her guard down. You know, for a hero, you don't sound very convincing, but I guess you don't seem like much of a bad guy either. What's your name? Solid Snake. Suddenly Emma stood up and grabbed Snake by the ear. Hello? Halibut Igla? I can't, I can't even, don't even know what those words are. I asked you what your name was, not what your nickname was. God, what a freak. Emma released Snake's ear and looked him square in the eye. What's your real name? I got rid of it. Huh? People in my line of work don't need names. A slight frown crossed Emma's face. Hmm. You might not be a bad guy, but you sure are weird, but whatever. So, solid. Call me Snake. Snake sighed. Talking to this kid was making him tired. Man, you're really uptight about names, aren't you? Okay then, Snake. You're... Snake interrupted her. Let me ask you a few questions, alright? Sure, fine. What are those terrorists looking for you? Why are those terrorists looking for you? Maybe it's because they find me irresistibly attractive. Snake couldn't think of anything to say to this. Emma seemed a little disappointed. Or maybe it's because I changed the password for the computer system and locked them out. What do you mean? Emma explained. She'd seen the terrorists trying to use the Big Shell's computer system to do something. Then after creating a diversion and making her escape, she'd made a change to the system so that they could, couldn't could use it anymore. It brought me some time, and I thought I, it might irritate them as, I added bon as an added bonus too. She was probably more concerned with the latter, Snake thought to himself. So, what are the terrorists trying to do with the system? How should I know? Does it have something to do with the ghost of Big Shell? What are you talking about? Emma framed a look of, of surprise. 
They said that some of their comrades got killed by the ghost of Big Shell. So who is this ghost they're talking about anyway? Emma glared at Snake in disgust. Why are you looking at me like that? So, ghost of Big Shell? That's so lame. She waved her hands around above her head. Sure, it's true that three of them have died in the last month. It was actually really sad. Two of them just up and disappeared one after another. Then this other guy who just got here, he disappeared too. But they were all accidents, okay? They just... Connecting... That, what? They're just connecting it with some stupid childish legend. Sorry, I can't read today, apparently. Legend. So this ghost story has been around for a while. Yeah, they say there was this one employee a long time ago whose son died and he tried to kill himself, but he didn't really die. He just got really mangled and stuff and now he haunts this place. You know, that sort of thing. Something in Emma's eyes seemed to flicker for a moment but she quickly recovered. Her voice became cheerful again. Hey, these kinds of places always have one or two ghost stories associated with them, right? Some people say they've seen shadows lurking around supposed in supposedly empty rooms, but personally, I think someone's probably just slacking off on the job. But there's no such thing as ghosts. Emma was clearly getting flustered. Okay, settle down. I don't believe in ghost stories either. I know, stupid, aren't they? Emma looked relieved. Right, but I don't want to rule out any possibilities. Do you think anyone could have gotten in here without authorization? Emma thought for a minute. Big Shell is almost completely automated, so most of it is inaccessible to people. But yeah, I guess it might be possible. Still, suddenly the door to the dining hall burst open. Enemy guards started pouring into the room, shouting angrily. It looked like their conversation had dragged on a little bit too long. Snake grunted in frustration. It was tough to concentrate with Emma around. Emma, get down, Snake yelled as he drew his USP. I'm going to save the game. Oh God, we're in combat. I wasn't prepared. Thank God I have a ration. Where am I being shot from? Ah! Go away! Ah! I don't like this! Like this at all? Are they all dead? Oh, it's over. <laughs> all right, fair enough. Breathe. The guards all lay silent on the floor. Snake put away his gun and moved towards Emma, who was cowering in the corner again. He put his hand on her shoulder. Emma, are you all right? Yeah. Emma hung her head, trying to avoid Snake's gaze. Emma, I know I've only known you for ten minutes, but I've already learned something about you. What's, like, what's that? You're just like them. You're good at killing people. She was trying to put on a strong face, but her voice was wavering. In my world, said Snake, there's only one law. Kill or be killed. That's what kept me alive so far. And that's the only thing that's keeping you alive right now. If you want to survive, you'd better learn to be strong. Emma raised her head. I just learned something else about you. You're also good at justifying yourself, aren't you? Emma drew closer to Snake. His face was covered with the blood of blood of others. It was a face exhausted by battle. Snake was wounded in numerous places. Emma tried to avert her eyes. He'd suffered all that just to protect her. I'm sorry. Emma handed Snake a ration. Here. It's nothing. Forget about it, said Snake. Now let's get back to the task at hand. Where are the other hostages? They're all on the first floor of the Shell 2 core. I don't think anybody's been hurt yet, but still. Don't worry, I'll do everything I can to help them. You better stay here. Wait, you can't get to Shell 2 core. What? I locked the door and struck D that links the Shell 1 and Shell 2 cores. It won't be open, even with a card. So how do I open it then? 
You've got her access to node in strut B and enter the password. She dictated a 16 character string of letters and numbers to him. Snake nodded, got it. Emma looked surprised. Shouldn't you write it down or something? In my line of work, we don't take notes. Snake demonstrated by reciting the password from memory. So you're good at memori memorising things too, huh? I'm heading for strut B. You stay put. But, but, no buts, just leave everything to me. I'm good at running errands too. Emma smiled. Okay, here, take this. With you. It's an extra security card. You'll need it to get into strut B. I've got my own card with me, so it's okay. Snake took the card from Emma. I'll be back before you know it. No matter what happens, don't open the door and try not to make a sound. Emma nodded and closed the door to the locker. Another save! Alright, let's go. Now we have the M9. It should be... A hell of a lot easier. She says. She hopes. Right, let's see what. Oh. Are we good? God, talk about reflexes! <laughs> like, literally, I feel like I'm on fire right now. And I've got a chaff grenade now as well, which is always good. Right, easy. This is unpleasant. Hello? I'm so scared. <laughs> I don't want to make a mistake! Right, we made it. Snake accessed the node. He entered the password that Emma had given him. After a moment, the monitor displayed a message saying that the lock on the door to Shell 1 2 connecting bridge had been released. Snake turned to head back to Strut C. He heard a voice emanating from an unseen speaker. It sounded like some kind of building wide announcement. This is a message for the ghost of Big Shell. You are hereby ordered to remove the lock on the system using the control key you got from the girl at once. You have 15 minutes to comply. If you fail to do so, we'll kill the girl. I repeat. The voice repeated its warning. A chill ran up his spine. The girl they were talking about had to be Emma. Had they really gotten their hands on her? And... What was this control key they were talking about? Snake called Otacon via the codec. They got Emma. Otacon exploded. What did you... Just calm down for a minute. I'm trying to think of a way to save her. The calm returned to Otacon's voice. Alright. The control key that they're talking about, could it be this card that Emma gave me? No, that's just a security guard. It's only good for opening doors. The control key is just what... It sounds like an actual key that only Big Shell System Administrator would have access to. It acts as a verification device. Basically, you can't make any changes to Big Shell's computer system without it. The terrorists need to release the lock on the system. What if they used a password like I just did? That wouldn't work. Passwords are only good up to security level 3. Beyond that, you'll need the control key to gain access. Sounds like you've been doing your homework. Snake, are you sure Emma didn't give you anything else? Yeah, what makes what makes them think I have it anyway? Maybe Emma lied to them. Or maybe she gave it to the real ghost of the big shell. That's not possible, said Otacon quickly. And how can you be so sure, countered Snake. Hey, you said yourself that there's no such thing, didn't you? We have to hurry and save Emma. You're right, but we don't even know where they've taken her. Over the codex, Snake heard the sound of Otacon smacking one hand against the other. That's it! Why didn't I think of it before? What? Emma said that she had her own card with her, right? Security cards in the big shell work on a RFID system. 
That's radio frequency identification. Each RFID card is embedded with an IC chip that sends data via a radio signal. The card readers can use these signals to detect any IDs within range. All data in the Big Shell is managed by an integrated management system. And that system is accessible with a level 3 password. Otacon was speaking rapidly now. Meaning? said Snake, meaning that you can use the node to find out which strut Emma is in. Snake tried accessing the node again using that password. Snake did as Otacon said. After a moment, the screen displayed a blinking light in strut F. That's her! She's in strut F, Snake! You've got to hurry! Alright then, let's go. We've got this snake. Is there anything interesting in here for me? <gasps> Ooh, a ration! Won't say no to one of those. Right, what have we got here? Alright, this guy. Oh. And a cipher. We should be able to um, be able to outrun the cipher actually, so we should be okay. And we were! We know there is a guy here. Oh. Sleepy, sleepy! Right, breathe. Don't do or say anything that could potentially. Oh. I saw ya. But I can't hit you apparently. There we go. Keep going, keep going. That's it, snake. Yeah. Alright. Drop you. You? Where's the other one? Where's the other one? Oh, he's down there. Alright, we don't need to shoot him, that's good. I see you up there. One. Right, he's gone down there. Not a problem. Oh my god! Right. Careful, 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 careful. Easy. Easy. Here. Ah! <laughs> God. All right, all right. What we got here? What we got here? Is there any more, or is it just the three? No, wait, we're not going there yet, are we? You saw nothing! Okay. Whew. Snake passed through the door to strut F. Emma was being held captive somewhere in this part of the facility. He'd have to be extra cautious from here on out. If the enemy spotted him, they'd kill Emma without hesitation. Snake would have to find her without being detected. Whew. 
<laughs> right, let's go, let's go. Right, we have to be extra sneaky, sneaky for it, aren't we? I see ya. Nothing here. Hmm? Hmm? Oh, gotcha. All oh, right, bloody bullets. Come on, give me some tranquilizer bullets. Oh no, I really need FEMA Bobby bullets! Snake had found Emma. Emma! Emma looked up without rising from her crouched position. You're late! She had a sullen look on her face, but she didn't appear to be hurt. Sorry, it took me a while to find the control key. Emma stuck out her tongue at Snake's sarcasm. Oh, that. You have to admit, it did buy some time, didn't it? She showed no signs of remorse. Just as O'Connor guessed, Emma had indeed lied to the terrorists. What in the world made you do a thing like that? If you'd made one false move, hey, I just didn't want them to get away with it, that's all. And I believed in you. Believed what? That you come rescue me, of course. Snake shook his head. That's not the point. The point is you shouldn't be putting yourself in so much danger. I know, but listen, you're never going to believe this. I found out what the terrorists are looking for. What is it? Drugs! Emma related a story that she'd heard from one of the guards while she was being held captive. The armed group that had taken over Big Shell belonged to a Russian crime syndicate. With the collaboration of a number of employees in the facility, the syndicate was using Big Shell as a waypoint in their drug smuggling operations. At night, they'd sneak the drugs from smuggling ships out at sea into Big Shell using small boats. Then they'd slip the drugs in with the outgoing cargo from Big Shell and get them into the country that way. Security in the harbour had been getting tight in recent years, and this was a convenient and effective way of getting the goods through without being exposed. One month earlier, they'd brought in 600 kilogram shipment of drugs with a street value of over 7 million. The following day, two of the employees who were working with the syndicate were killed in two consecutive accidents. The syndicate immediately sent one of their men in to investigate, but he too was killed in an accident shortly after arriving. The leaders of the syndicate decided that these incidences were the work of a rival syndicate that had been competing with them in the drug trade and that were now trying to seize their shipment. They'd sent in their troops to recover the drugs, leading to the current situation. So the ghost of Big Shell is... A mischievous grin sped, spread across Emma's face. Exactly, it's not a ghost at all. It's just a plain old hitman who's been sent by the rival syndicate to steal the drugs. And you told them that I'm the hitman? Well, yeah, but what's done is done, right? No use arguing about it. Snake decided not to pursue the matter any further. He changed the subject, so... Uh, changed the subject. So where could they be hiding such a huge amount of drugs in Big Shell? I have no clue. I didn't have any idea this was going on. I'm still having trouble believing it now. Snake too was puzzled. How could it be possible for a few employees to keep hundreds of kilograms of drugs hidden in Big Shell without the others finding out? He couldn't afford to waste any more time thinking about it though. The hostages' lives were still in danger. The hostages are still in Shell 2 core, aren't they? Yeah. Emma tried to get up and stumbled. She slowly staggered to her feet. Are you alright? Snake asked. Yeah, I'm fine. Actually, the terrorists injected me with something. They said it was to keep me from running away again. I think it was some kind of tranquilizer. Now, my feet feel like they weigh about a ton each. Emma started to lose her balance again. Snake caught her as she fell. Even in her inca incapacitated state, she managed to extract information from the enemy and never lost sight of her purpose for being there. This girl was full of surprises.
In that respect, at least she resembled her stepbrother. That's enough. You better go hide somewhere. No, I'm coming with you. But please take me with you. Emma's eyes leveled with snakes. You saved my life twice now. I want to return the favour. I know I'll come in handy somehow. Please. Snake gave in at last. To get to the Shell 1 core, he'd have to cross the Shell 1-2 connecting bridge from Strut D. The two set out for Strut D. Hang on a second, Emma. I'm just going to check this. No, nothing. Right, here we go. Come along, dear. Right, just stay there. Stay there one second, Emma, okay? I'm in desperate need of some bullets here. Oh, thank God. Right. Hmm? Whoa! There's somebody there. <laughs> Who is that? Oh, here. That was close. Right, stay there, Emma. I just need to make sure that there's no one else floating about. Well, there's that guy down there. We might be alright, actually. Nothing here. Right, now he's putting his report. Right, come on, Emma. Eva, shush. That's my cat, by the way. Come on, dear. I've got you, okay? I promise. Who's that? No, you don't. No, you don't. Right, let's have a ration. That was close, though. Right, come on, Emma. Right, stay here, dear. I need to take care of this little problem, okay? Don't think I missed you up there, buddy. Right, I think we got them all. Right, come on, Emma. Yeah, I got them all. Come on, let's go. I mean, to be fair, Snake, you could be... A little bit more gentle with her, couldn't you? Where are we going? Oh yeah, that's right. So I had a massive brain fart there and completely forgot what I was doing. Right. Snake and Emma arrived at Strut E. Emma's eyes were drawn to a nearby conveyor belt. I've got it, she exclaimed. Got what? I know where they hid the drugs. Emma went over to the node and immediately began punching in commands. How do you... Just wait and see. A second later, the conveyor belt spat out a crate. Emma opened it. It was packed tightly with plastic bags full of white powder. The syndicate guys knew that no matter how good the hiding spot, someone was sure to find the drugs if they hid them in just one place, said Emma as they watched. More and more crates arrived via the conveyor belt. 
So they hid the drugs in these crates and set them up. So they just go around and around Big Shell without actually coming out anywhere. Snake couldn't help but admire the girl's brilliance. He watched as Emma took out her PDA and connected it to the node. Now, what are you doing? He said, Hmm, I think I might have found something interesting here. This must be... Just then, a figure emerged from behind the conveyor belt. It was one of the terrorists. As soon as he spotted Snake and Emma standing there, he ran away. Snake moved to pursue the escaping terrorist, but Emma grabbed his hand. Wait! Let's go. He's going to call his friends. I know that. Just wait one more minute. Emma began to punch commands into the node with incredible speed. What the hell are you up to now? If we run now, they'll just come after us. So within seconds, Snake could hear the sounds of a crowd beginning to gather outside the door. Footsteps, voices, barking orders, rifles being cocked. They come crashing into the room any minute now. Emma, however, remained glued to the screen of the node. Emma! yelled Snake. She finally detached herself from the node. There, that should do it. Okay then, let's get going. The door bust open. Somehow, the two managed to escape from Strut E onto DE Connecting Bridge. Snake turned back towards Strut E, keeping an eye on their rear. The terrorists would be coming after them at any moment now. He slapped a new cartridge into the chamber of his gun and shouted at Emma, urging her to move quickly towards Strut D. She responded with a nonchalant look. There's no need to be in such a hurry, you know, she said. They waited for a while, but the door to Strut E remained shut. From the other side, they could hear a... Termal, termit, as the soldiers bashed in vain against the tightly sealed door. Snake turned to Emma. What did you do? I programmed the node to seal off all doors to Strut E once we were out safely. Those guys aren't going anywhere. Emma looked extremely proud of herself. It seems she picked up a thing or two from her experience with Snake in Strut C. They entered Strut D. Snake looked around for signs of the enemy, but there was no one in sight. The terrorists must have sent the bulk of their forces to Strut E. If that were true, then the rest of the struts would be nearly deserted. Rescuing the hostages would be a breeze. Snake and Emma passed through Strut D and emerged onto the Shell 1, Shell 2 connecting bridge. Here, too, the enemy was nowhere to be seen. Emma smiled, her characteristic smile. See, no problem at all. Didn't I say I'd come in handy? I'd have to admit you were pretty good back there, Snake said with a nod. He recalled the way Emma had connected to the node using her PDA. By the way, you weren't downloading something back there, were you? Yeah, was it obvious? Emma took out her PDA. When I was activating the conveyor belt, I found a suspicious looking hidden file next to the conveyor belt control file. I decided to download it, and this is what I found. The PDA... The screen of her PDA displayed the file. It appeared to be some kind of note from one of the two employees who'd been killed in the accidents. The same ones who were helping the syndicate smuggle drugs into the big shell. In it, he explained that he was only cooperating with the Russians because his wife and child were being held hostage. But last year, he found out that they'd apparently been killed while trying to escape. He fell into deep despair, and at one point he'd even thought of killing himself. But then, he had a vision. It was still too early for him to die. No, he had to get revenge on the Syndicate first. Indeed, he'd made them pay in blood for what they did to his wife and child. Over the course of the next year, he devised an ingenious plan. He'd make it look like he was killed by a rival syndicate that was trying to steal the drugs. This would start a war between the two syndicates that would end up destroying both. First, he faked his own disappearance. Shortly afterwards, he used the crane to crush the man 
the syndicate had sent to watch him. When the Mafia sent a man to investigate both incidents, he threw him in the ocean. Just as he expected, a war erupted between these two rival syndicates. With everything in place, he could finally rest in peace. He said that he was going to join his wife and child. Finally, he implored the person reading the memo to say a prayer for his departed wife and child. The file ended there. It was dated three days ago. Snake looked up from the PDA. I guess this means the ghost of Big Show is dead. Emma was unable to hide her shock. I... I guess so. Actually, I downloaded one more file. Snake's ears picked up a faint sound of something flying through the air. Instantly, he grabbed Emma and held her tight. There was an explosion. The force of the blast knocked Snake and Emma off their feet. What was that? Emma groaned in Snake's arms. A thunderous gale of wind beat against their cheeks. Hovering over the bridge beyond the wavering heat from the blast was the Harrier. Oh yeah, I guess there was something that could get out of strut -y. Emma muttered. A look of blank amazement on her face. The Harrier strafted the bridge with waves of machine gun fire. Snake and Emma fled back to the entrance of Strut D. Now what do we do? I guess we'll have to kill it. How? I'll think of something. Are you serious? Emma began to protest, but before she could finish, Snake thrust her through the door of Strut D. What are you doing? She demanded. Stay there. No matter what happens, don't come out here. But just listen to me for once, okay? Snake smiled at her. I already promised someone I'd bring you back with me. What? The door slammed shut. Snake heard the sound of a helicopter approaching. It was Otacon and his Kasaka. Snake, use this. Otacon tossed down a box from the cockpit. Stinger missiles. With these, it became somewhat of an even fight. Snake turned and prepared to face the Harrier in battle. I absolutely love the Harrier fight. Like, it is definitely one of my favourites in the franchise. I absolutely love it. So what I will do is, in the description below, I will post the link to the video where I fought the Harrier in the main Let's Play. So if you haven't seen it, or if you'd like to see it again, you will find it there. But, Otacon, you've got to keep that helicopter out of the way, dude. I don't want to accidentally hit it. What did I just say, Otacon? I sure ran, dude. I'll let you go out in style. Damn. Uh, you got a bit of smoke coming out your tail there, mate. Take oh. This. Oh, you're not looking good there. I don't think all that smoke is good for your engines. You can't take much more of this. Told you. 
The Harrier lost control and crashed into the bottom of shell one. As Snake watched it plummet to earth, the door to strut D opened. Emma peeked out cautiously. She looked as if she'd been crying. It's over. What took you so long? Sorry. Are you okay? You're not hurt or anything? I'm fine, really. Snake and Emma freed the Big Shell employees who had been taken hostage and used Big Shell's radio to contact the police. The cops would no doubt be arriving soon. The terrorists were still trapped in Strut E. Snake and Emma decided to go to the heliport on Strut L... Strut I? Uh, to wait for reinforcements to arrive. By the way, Emma, weren't you saying something about a second file earlier? Oh yeah, I managed to dig up the personal folders of the guys who were working with the syndicate. The first guy who died, the guy who wrote the memo, had a password encrypted on this, in the file. I downloaded it and... Emma pulled something up on her PDA. Huh? Emma tilted her head to one side. What's wrong? It's not coming up. The memory IC that was stored in the file had been shot and damaged. She tried to download the file into another IC, but it was no use. The server that the file was on had been damaged, she said. The data room in Shell 1 Core must have been hit by the shock of the Harrier crash. Snake heard the sound of a helicopter approaching. Emma gazed up at the sky. Is that the police? The Kasatka came into view. Upon seeing its dark shadow, Emma tilted her head to the side, puzzled. That's not the police. Who is that? Snake looked up at the Kasatka. That's my ride. Otacon's face peered out of the cockpit. Snake could detect fear and apprehension in his eyes, but there was something else as well. Some kind a grim some as well, a kind of grim determination. And I think he's got room for you too. Me? You'll understand soon enough. The Kasatka began to descend. The wind from its rotors beat fiercely upon their faces. Emma brushed her hair back from her cheeks. As the helicopter drew closer, Emma recognised the figure in the pilot seat. She gasped. Her eyes remained frozen. She stood perfectly still as if rooted in place. Tears began to roll down her cheeks. The Kasatka touched down at last. Without even waiting for the rotors to stop spinning, Emma rushed to meet her long-lost brother. We did it! We did it! We beat Big Shell Evil! I am extremely happy. Thank you everyone for watching. And I will be seeing you very soon in the next chapter. Which is... I can't remember, hang on. Which is Confidential Legacy. That will be the next one we'll be doing. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.